Welcome everyone to Enhancing Boys and Girls Club's member organizations. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm here at TechSoup's headquarters in San Francisco. And we're happy to have you join us today. Getting started, I want to make sure everyone knows how to use ReadyTalk, the platform that we're employing today for this webinar. You can chat into us using the little chat box on the lower left side of your screen. Let us know if you have any questions for the presenters, or if you need help, have any audio issues, or just want to say hello and where you are dialing from today. We will be on to monitor those questions and flagging them for Q&A, and we will be here to help you with any issues throughout the webinar. We do keep all lines muted except for those of our presenters so that we can capture a clear recording that you can refer to later or share with your colleagues. If you lose your Internet connection, go ahead and click the link in the confirmation email you would have received when you registered, or in one of the reminders. If you were registered before this morning, you would have gotten a reminder about an hour ago. If you lose your phone connection and you are dialed in by phone, go ahead and dial the number that has been chatted out into the chat window. Um, if you have any audio issues, because most of you are hearing the audio stream through your computer speakers, if you have any problems with that, you can dial in using that same 800 number that is in the chat window right now. If you are hearing an echo, it may mean that you are logged in more than once and you would want to close one of those ReadyTalk instances. And if you have any bigger issues, you can contact ReadyTalk support at 800-843-9166. We do record these webinars so that we can make them available to you on our website. And you can view all kinds of other webinars on a variety of technology topics for nonprofits at TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. Later today you will get an email from me with the link to this presentation, the full recording, and any links and resources we discuss. And if you would like to tweet today's event, feel free to do so using the hashtag TechSoup. Again, my name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. I've been with the organization for about six years, and prior to that spent 10 years working with small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California. I was regularly the accidental techie, so I've been in the position of trying to make technology decisions to serve my community without a whole lot of tech expertise. So I hope that today's webinar we can impart some of our expertise here at TechSoup in helping you Boys and Girls Clubs of America receive more technology donations through our programs. Also joining us on the line today is Gail Samuelson Carpentier who is the Chief Business Development Officer here at TechSoup Global. And she is the person that helps get all of these donation programs into our catalog and expand them to the widest possible audience of nonprofits, social benefit organizations, and charities around the world. So we are grateful to have her join us. Also joining is Erin Dowell who is in our Customized Programs uh, Department on the Client Services team where he helps work on national affiliate accounts like Boys and Girls Clubs and help groups like YMCA and other organizations that have chapters or clubs around the country access these donations en masse. Also is Ashley Hendershot who is also in the Customized Programs team and with our Client Services program. and she does much the same as what Aaron does. And so they are both the experts on helping you navigate the donation programs through TechSoup and that are available to you at the BGCAs. On the back end you will see assisting Alexandria Lewis who is on TechSoup's team as well. And she will be here to help capture and flag your questions throughout the webinar and respond to them in the chat. So like I said, if a question moves you, feel free to post it in that chat window anytime. Even if we can't get to it right away, we will make sure that we have got time to respond to you. So TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are working towards the day when every nonprofit, library, foundation, social benefit organization on the planet has the access to technology knowledge and resources to better meet their mission. We do that in a variety of ways since 1987, serving organizations in more than 80 countries, delivering more than $4.2 billion in sector savings with technology. So you can find a variety of things at TechSoup's website, TechSoup.org, uh, learning resources, community where you can ask questions of other organizations and staff people that are in similar situations as yours. And you can find those donated technologies from more than 450 donated products from more than 45 donor partners. So a look at some of our donor partners here 
you will see a variety of big names that you probably recognize, and probably some that are a little bit smaller that you might not recognize. And hopefully today we can shed a little bit of light on both ends of that spectrum. So to get us started with the topic at hand, we know that you filled out some questions when you registered for today's webinar. Um, and so we have an idea of how many of you are already registered with TechSoup and have maybe done a little bit of this process. But we want to best serve your needs today. So go ahead and take a minute and answer the questions on the screen here. Have you requested donated products for your BGCA before? And go ahead and click on the links. that You can click multiple. So if you've requested Microsoft program donations or received them, or if you've received Symantec program donations, or maybe you've accessed some of the other donations available through TechSoup's website. Maybe you haven't, but you have colleagues in your branch ha that have. Um, or perhaps your club never has accessed these donations. This will help inform a bit uh, for our presenters today so that they can customize a little bit of how they address it, the tour in particular, and how much time we spend on certain parts. If you've never done most of these things, then we'd spend a little bit more time walking through how to get started. And if most of you have done that part or have gone through the process to some degree, we'll probably spend a little bit, more, a little bit less time on the front end. So go ahead and just take a moment. I'm going to give a few more seconds so everybody has a chance to click on those radio buttons on their screen. And then we'll show these results. And it looks like 70% of folks who clicked, clicked that they have received Microsoft product donations, which is terrific. They are our most generous sponsor and donor, so we're happy that you've been able to access those donations for your club. And we'll talk about how to optimize and maximize the amount of donations and the volume that you can access because too often people don't realize how much they can get. Um, and then it looks like about 35% have accessed the Symantec program, and 35% have accessed uh, other donation programs. So that's terrific. And a chunk, about 23% in total, have not done it personally themselves. So maybe their club has, but they've not done it, or their club never has that they're aware of. So that's really helpful. So with that, I want to go ahead and welcome our first presenter, Gail Carpentier, uh, Samuelson Carpentier, to the line to give us a little bit of background and context for why we do this, and why we want to work with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America to make sure you can access all of the technologies available to you. Thanks for joining the program, Gail. We're glad to have you. Thank you so much, Becky. And you can be Carpentier, you can be Carpentier, either one works, it's fine. So nice to get a chance to meet everybody. Uh, we were delighted to have over 100 folks register for this uh, event today. And I'm here as the Chief Business Development Officer just to give you a little positioning about why the Boys and Girls Clubs of America are so important to TechSoup and to our donor partners. We have been working for a long time, and this is actually the beginning of my eighth, my 14th year at TechSoup. So I was the founding business development person when we started uh, creating online donations. So there's a lot that I can tell you about it, and I will pr promise Becky that I will not try to give you the history of the whole program here. But before I give you that background, I just wanted to invite each and every one of you that if there are things you wish TechSoup had made available or that would be beneficial for you that you don't currently see on the site. If you go to our forum, there is a forum called Wishlist, uh, which is a, an area that I monitor. And if you have things that you wish TechSoup would you know, go off and pursue, that gets to me directly. Please feel free to uh, give us your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions, and I appreciate that very much up front. Part of what makes Boys and Girls Club so important for us uh, is that our friends at Microsoft and many of our other partners know the excellent work you do in the field. And because of that, and Aaron will talk more about this a little later, you have a quite a unique relationship with Microsoft and have the ability to get some really great no-cost resources from them. In my work, part of a new program that I have the pleasure of working on with Aaron and Ashley and Alex are what we call major market development for organizations that have a very large footprint, hundreds of sites around the country. And often it is very difficult for those organizations uh, to know how to best benefit from TechSoup. Sometimes there's a misconception that because you're part of a large organization, you don't qualify for TechSoup. That is in fact not true. 
And so the work that we do is to make sure that not just you get a little bit of what you're entitled to, but we make sure that you're registered correctly so you can take advantage of every single resource that our donors are wanting to share with you to make your work more effective so you can better serve the boys and girls in your constituency and your communities around the country. So if there's any questions, uh, feel free to send them over to chat. But my role here is to say that right now uh, our major market programs are still in its beta state as we look for ways to know how to better impact larger organizations we are learning from you every single day. Sometimes these go very easily. Sometimes it's a little kludgy as we move forward. But please feel free to help us figure out how to best help you. I assure you that the vast majority of our donors are sitting willing and able to support the work you do. We just need to find the best possible path for you to be able to take advantage of these programs and to make sure that the different sites around the country know that you're eligible for much more than Microsoft. So uh, that's everything I have to share. Any other questions, please feel free to send them to chat, and Alex and I will work on answering those. Please feel free to stop by the forum uh, to the wish list and send me your ideas. And Becky, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you so much for that, Gail. Appreciate the introduction and the context for why we are doing this work. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and have Aaron Dowell, take it away, who is going to talk to us a bit more about the benefits and the impact of our programs with BGCAs so far. Thanks, Aaron. We're glad to have you join. Thanks, Becky. Um, yeah, we've been hoping to engage the clubs for some time on a higher level about our offerings and services. And I've spoken to many of you about our product donations, site navigation, fulfillment issues over the years. And we're hoping also to take this webinar as a first step to a continuing dialogue um, providing you with some relevant tech solutions. Um, some of the topics I mentioned in the email I sent out were free software programs, uh, bulk registrations for branch accounts, site navigation, donor focus, story makers, and do-it-yourself um, learning tools. But first before I get into any of that, I'm going to just showcase a couple of significant statistics that I think uh, are pretty impactful. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with our donation program, typically we're able to provide uh, donated software from our uh, corporate donors at about 4 to 10 percent of retail. So with that, those numbers, it's pretty compelling. You can figure out the uh, cost savings from there. And if you'll see this slide, last fiscal year, uh, which was July 1st through um, June 30th of this year, um, 808 clubs participated in the donation program. Um, the retail value of the donations was almost $7 million, with almost $7 million saved. So uh, obviously those are huge numbers. But for us, what we'd like to do is we'd like to increase the savings for more clubs. So we need, really need to raise the awareness. And that's again part of the reason for this webinar. We're thinking that we can uh, you know, make some compelling cases for having more clubs join, save more money, and as Becky mentioned, uh, take that money and direct it to the, the services that you provide to the boys and girls. Um, we have about 2,500 clubs registered. But like I said, as you can see, there are about 808 clubs participated last year. So you know, there's, there's a good number of clubs um, as yet to re-engage us or really understand what we do. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is to get people an idea of what we do is the free programs. Let's see, I apologize. I have a little technical issue here. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so um, I know that many of you are familiar with the uh, free Microsoft program, which we help facilitate. Um, this is actually directly from bgca.net at Club Tech. Um, what happens is that we work with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America and Microsoft uh, to uh, fulfill these uh, free software donations to you. Um, what you can do if you don't know already, you, like I said, you can go to bgca.net, uh, go through to Club Tech, and place these software donations. Your contact is listed here, uh, Ahmad Faramazi. And Ahmad is my contact who then provides me with um, I guess every two weeks um, the cumulative requests for Microsoft bundles through Club Tech. I then use a tool that we have that imports 
or um, sort of registers all the accounts and then imports the donations uh, into our website, and they fulfill. I think a lot of you are familiar with this uh, program, but a lot of you aren't. So um, I'm hoping that we can uh, – for those of you that are not familiar with this, I hope we, we can uh, you know, save some money for you here. Um, and as you'll notice, I also listed the fiscal year savings for 2014 through Club Tech. That's the bulk of the savings that you saw on the previous slide. That's uh, almost $5 million. So it's quite significant. We're, we're really pr proud to participate in saving the club's money in this sense. You know, um, I mentioned that we have about 2,500 uh, clubs registered and only 808 participated the last uh, fiscal year. I think a lot of that has to do with employee turnover and historical information is lost on what to do when it comes to technology uh, services. So again, another uh, reason for this webinar is to raise that awareness, re-engage the clubs that have, may have placed one or two requests in the past, and get them to continually and consistently place more requests, save more money, get the tools they need, and again, and redirect those um, uh, now open uh, dollars to your services to your boys and girls. And let's see. Oh, uh, all of you probably know that Laverne Postel was the previous contact. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that Ahmad is the new one. So if you have any questions about um, the program, you can contact Ahmad. Or if you have any questions about it, uh, you can contact us as well. We can provide some context. And you can email us at bgca at TechSoup org. Uh, we'll uh, ref um, mention all the contact information again uh, during this webinar and at the end. So don't worry about forgetting that information or remembering. Okay, I'm going on to the second um, free program. This is newer. It's pretty exciting. Um, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America went directly to Symantec as part of their goal to get all the clubs online in a safe and secure fashion. And they simply asked Symantec, hey, can we get some free security software? And Symantec was kind enough to say, sure. Um, so with that in mind, they had us uh, here at TechSoup create a special landing page where um, all the clubs can place requests for free software, uh, security software from Symantec. And that includes one enterprise level product, endpoint protection, and one Norton desktop based product, Norton Internet Security. So um, in a couple of slides down, we'll um, actually show you how to get that and how to obtain it. We'll uh, do a little site navigation and direct you to the site as well. And as you see, the, uh, the fiscal year savings for 2014 was $250,000. So it's quite significant. And I've listed Ashley's name, my colleague here on the webinar. She'll be the one answering any questions that you have regarding uh, how to place those requests and get those licenses. Okay, so one of the things I hinted at or talked about when I sent the email out was bulk registration. So we use this tool to, be, uh, to register club accounts in bulk. Uh, that's the tool that is used for the Microsoft requests that we get from Club Tech. Uh, we also use that just to generally uh, register club accounts that uh, don't need Microsoft. It's a convenient way to um, get orgs with multiple branches uh, registered with us. Um, also, we will touch on uh, soon bulk requesting. Um, some of the results or positives to this would be consistent and coordinated technology. Um, if you have one person and you need um, uh, all your branch accounts um, registered, we can do that and work with that person in a quick manner as opposed to going to our site and individually registering all those organizations. Uh, the consolidated savings, I sort of mentioned it a little earlier, um, allows you to get 4 to 10 percent of retail uh, product savings um, through some of the bulk requests that we can do. Um, another result will be the ability to allocate revenues to other mission-based activities. So again, less money spent on software, more money spent on lunches, sports equipment, craft materials, all the things you need for the boys and girls. Okay, here's just another slide regarding bulk importing for registrations. Um, you know, I sort of touched on this, but uh, to give you a better idea of how it looks, if you have five branches, you can have five TechSoup accounts, and that will equal more requests and more money saved. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar, everyone is familiar with that, because I think often, often people just think they can re, uh, register one account for one branch, and that's it. And that uh, sort of limits them to what they can get through TechSoup. Uh, in actuality, we're able to um, register all individual branches. Um, there are some conditions and restrictions, but once we get that criteria um, out of the way, we're able to um, go ahead with uh, the registrations. 
And what we will be doing is um, if you have any registrations that you would like to do for more of your branches, you can send a request to bgc at TechSoup.org, and then we will send you uh, the current list that is registered and the branches that need to be imported with how-to instructions. And this will go the, the same for importing and placing donation requests. There are two ways to place donation requests. You can do it individually, and I think most of you are familiar with that. Uh, you log onto our site, you look for a product, and you place a request. Um, but we can also do the uh, bulk importing for multiple branches. If, again, if you have um, a need for semantic licenses for all your branch accounts, uh, you can send a request to us, and uh, through the how-to document that we'll provide you, we can send you, uh, we can import those requests for you as well. Aaron, really quickly, we have one question that I figured it would be good to clarify on this slide. Uh, Joanne asks, if you have only one 5013 employer ID number, if you only have one, can you register several branches with that number? Is that how it works? That is exactly how it works. Thanks for asking that. Yes, so one EIN will equal or will be um, um, equivalent for, let's just say as, as an example, five branches. So yes, you can certainly do that uh, through our program. Thank you for that. You can go ahead. I just wanted to grab that one before we moved off that slide. You're welcome. Okay, I am going to move on and um, throw it over to Ashley, my colleague, regarding some of the resources that we built up over the years for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Thanks so much, Erin. And thank you all for joining us today. We're super excited to have you. Um, so we wanted to show you a few other resources that TechSoup does offer to the clubs. We um, created a special landing pages, uh, page that's specific for clubs, and we did this with the guidance of Bert Sams, who uh, is the former Senior Technology Support Director from the Boys and Girls Clubs. And this was back in 2002, so we've had this going for quite a while now. Um, we offer exclusive the, the free programs that Aaron highlighted, which I'm going to walk you through on, their, um, on the special landing page. And also, um, we've got other technology solutions for you guys like forums, blogs, and um, that community um, area for forums that Gail mentioned earlier, as well as older webinars that you could get other resources from. And we offer a bi-monthly newsletter which is sent out every two months. And if any of you have suggestions on topics that you would like to see in that newsletter or things you'd like us to highlight, we recommend that you email us at bgca at techsoup.org, and we would be happy to hear any suggestions that you have. Also, if you have any questions about um, bulk registering or bulk imports, please don't hesitate to again email that BGCA alias at BGCA at TechSoup.org, and I promise I will get back to you as soon as possible. Now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys to kind of walk you through that special BGCA landing page and highlight a couple of those free software products as well as some other um, donations that might be available to your clubs and benefit you. Now while Ashley gets her screen loaded up, go ahead and let us know in the chat if things are moving too quickly or if it's not loading for you completely so we can make sure to give time for that to load so you can see everything clearly. Thanks Ashley. Go ahead and take it away. Sure. Thank you Becky. So here you can see uh, shared with you is the special BGCA landing page on TechSoup.org. The web page is www.techsoup.org backslash BGCA. At the top here, you can see our um, Boys and Girls Club logo and um, highlighting special events that we have for Boys and Girls Clubs. And these will change often, so we recommend that you do come back and check if there's anything special going on. As you can see, today's webinar is highlighted. But also, if you're curious, if your clubs are already registered with us, you can always send us another email to bgca at techsoup.org, and we'll be happy to check and see if your clubs are in our system already or let you know if you want to import them. On the right-hand side are a couple of those resources we mentioned, the forums, the blogs, and the webinars. Up top here you can see that Community tab that Gail had mentioned earlier with a special link here to the forums in case you want to go there and list any wish list technology items that um, Gail could possibly help get into our system later. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here and show you here's the free Symantec listing. 
And here's Intuit for fundraising software, and Adobe, which I'm sure is very popular with the clubs. And um, Aaron seems to want to interject with a comment about Adobe, so please hold one second. <laughs> Yeah, thanks Ashley. You know, I just wanted to mention to everyone that uh, you'll probably notice when you go to our Adobe program page that uh, we either have a couple of products uh, compared to the large amount of products we used to have, or the products are out of stock. Um, right now, if you don't know, Adobe is going through a transition and trying to create a cloud model for their uh, donation program. We're all waiting with bated breath for when it comes back. And you know, it's probably the biggest single call driver we get here at TechSoup. Uh, so Adobe is very much aware of uh, the need in the nonprofit sector. Uh, they're working their hardest and their quickest to get some sort of um, balanced model that will uh, apply from their retail to their donated program. So uh, I just want to tell you that it's, it's heartfelt, and we all know that everybody needs it, and we're, we're waiting for it to come back. So when it does come back, we will definitely let you know. I suspect a lot of you may have some questions, and that's why you wanted to participate as well here in the webinar. I'm hoping that, that, can, that what I said just answered that question. Um, we'll keep in touch, and we'll see what happens, and we're hoping you know, sooner than later some sort of successful model comes around that they can provide uh, their cloud services uh, to the nonprofit sector through TechSoup. Just wanted to give that little blurb, and I'll return it back to Ashley. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to best navigate the special landing page in case you're looking for a specific type of donation program. At the top here, you can see that there's a purple arrow that says Get Products and Services. If you hover over by donor or provider, we bring up a full list of all of the donors who have offerings through TechSoup for the clubs. The only thing is, is that this can be overwhelming to some people, especially since these are just the donors' names and you don't even know what type of software they offer. So if you scroll down here to buy category or solution, we break it down a little easier for you. You can see that there is accounting. Oh, excuse me. There we go. By category or solution. Okay, you can see that there is accounting, business and technology, cloud computing, communications, computers and electronics, database and analytics, donor or grant management, fundraising, as well as others. And the easiest way to figure out um, which offers what is to go ahead and you know, click the title. Like let's say you are looking for security. We'll go ahead and click that. And this brings you up the donations that way. Now if you stay on the BGCA page, you can, for security purposes, you know that Symantec is available for clubs for free. So you can click View Details to see the two offerings, including Norton Internet Security and Endpoint Protection. Let's say you were interested in Norton Internet Security. You would click View Details, which would bring you to the donation page. On this page, you can see that we offer you the system requirements for this software. And, unfor and actually Norton Internet Security um, doesn't actually have any system requirements. So that particular product um, will be okay to go. Um, but um, we also have the rules, eligibility, and restrictions for clubs. And the nice thing is, is that um, the donation program does work the same for people who do pay the retail uh, or the, excuse me, the administrative fee like regular. But the thing is, let's say your club has more than um, 100 computers, you can write to us at bgca.techsoup.org, and we can see about getting an exception request made for your club. Oh, Aaron seems to have a comment. Yeah, I just wanted to mention you're correct. Um, this has happened in the past. Uh, when the Symantec uh, Security Donation Program first came on board a couple years ago, some people needed uh, well more than 100. And I, we sent that over to Symantec, and they approved it. So there is, there is some more uh, positives through this special program. Thanks, Aaron. So I hope that this gives you guys kind of a gist of what the um, Special Donation Program does look like. And I'm going to go back there to the home page and show you down here just more of those highlighted software products for the clubs. And again, please don't hesitate to use any of these special resources here on the side if you have any questions. And you can always email us at bgca.techsoup.org. Yeah, another thing I wanted to mention about this uh, just to add on to what you are saying, Ashley, 
is that oftentimes people come to this site and like Becky, maybe they were the accidental techie and they're burgeoning. Maybe they <laughs> maybe they're just starting out to figure to find out that hey, I'm the person in charge of technology. Um, oftentimes people come here, place their requests and get their products and go, what do I do with this? How do I remajigger this? Um, you know, if you look and uh, based on what Ashley said, our site is comprehensive. Um, we don't offer tech support with the products that we're able to um, provide to you through our donor partners. But we offer a strong counterbalance to that through our community and our forum section. The heads of IT departments of nonprofits provide their time to answer a lot of these questions. So you know, uh, this is in many ways the equivalent of uh, paid tech support. You may not get your answer in an hour. You may get it in two days. But the idea is that in some ways you're doing it yourself and you're getting more comfortable with um, talking online, uh, collaborating online, placing requests, and understanding technology. So that's our goal. Part of our goal here is to um, get people to place donation requests uh, and maximize what they can do with that, uh, but also use a bunch of the services and resources that we offer on the site as well. It's really going to like magnify the donation request if you kind of look at it from that perspective. Thank you, Aaron. And um, now we're going to move on. To, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now um, so we can continue on with um, more um, different types of offerings. Um, as we showed earlier, you can go by category or solution in case you're looking for a particular type of software. And in this particular case, we're going to try to highlight on fundraising. So I'm going to click the Fundraising tab which brings us down to a special donation we want to highlight called Teespring. Take it away, Aaron. Hi everyone. Um, let's see here. So uh, Teespring found out that we were doing a uh, club webinar and they were enthusiastic about uh, showcasing their offering uh, to the clubs. And I completely agree. It's a very fun and creative uh, process and tool that you can use to raise money and awareness. At the same time, uh, create a shirt with, in, in a branding sense, your uh, club location. And I am just going to make sure – oh good, okay. <laughs> just trying to get the technology right here on this webinar. Let's see here. There we go. Okay, so um, I have a couple of highlights here um, in pictures showing a couple of the um, real-life examples of the Teespring offerings. And if you notice here, uh, I've listed Teespring's uh, description. It's an online fundraising platform that allows organizations to launch web-based campaigns. And you can create custom uh, apparel. Uh, so then that's where the creative side comes in. And you'll see that there's different uh, campaigns. Uh, I've got some examples up here. Um, and you see some numbers there. For instance, the 975 uh, were sold of 150 uh, for the last XBMC shirt ever. Um, so what happens is that uh, you create these shirts, but all the while you, uh, Teespring actually helps you with the fundraising and the consulting in terms of how to do it, how to get the word out, how to market it uh, appropriately in a classic crowdfunding fashion. Um, to the right you'll see an example of a club um, Teespring campaign. It's the first and only one, and we're hoping that others uh, may come on board. Uh, that was for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Northern Shenandoah Valley. And um, I think they sold 51 out of their goal of 40. So they reached their goal and beyond. So that's kind of exciting. At the same time, you may find yourself with a goal of 100, and you may get 200. So it all depends on uh, the size of your, um, your club and its reach and the consultation of Teespring. I'm going to go over to this couple of instructional slides here. Um, here's a couple of things that Teespring wanted you to know. A um, couple of reasons why it makes fundraising so easy. There's no risks, no costs. Um, never spend a dollar on the service. Um, they absolutely have no upfront costs or hidden fees. There's no hassle. Um, they'll handle log logistics, inventory, and production. And as I mentioned earlier, you scale to size. So whether your organization wants to sell 100 shirts or 10,000, uh, dependent on the needs, uh, they will scale it for you appropriately. And uh, I think this part is really key, controlling your funds. Uh, you set the price and the, the donation, and Teespring will send a check directly to your org after the campaign. 
And some of the benefits of Teespring, of course, through the TechSoup account is $1 discount on all products sold. Um, you get a, a specific account manager at Teespring to help you manage the campaign, guide you through the process, uh, figure out the strategy, and also help uh, with the design and consultation. So again, we thought too that this would be a fun donor to sort of showcase to the clubs. And maybe it's something that, uh, you know, aside from club employees, but kids can get involved with the design. So that's something to think about. And here is the last reference to TechSoup, or excuse me, Teespring, how to fundraise with Teespring in five easy steps. So that's another thing. Uh, I think if anything, people are afraid of sort of the, when they hear crowdfunding, there seems to be sort of a complexity that comes to mind. But I think what they're trying to do is take that complexity out of it while still keeping the impact. So you, um, in five easy steps, you can create or design a piece and um, launch a ca campaign, um, reserve the shirts, uh, deal with the process of production and shipping, and then eventually Teespring will send you the profit and let you track the results. And the fair market value is $300. The admin fee or administrative fee offered through TechSoup is $20. So right off the gate, uh, there is a $280 savings on this uh, donation. So if any of you are interested in Teespring, um, I recommend you check the uh, product page out at our site. And if you have any further questions, you can always email us and we can see if we can get some more detailed questions. And it looks like Becky has a question. Well, I don't have a question, but Gail wants to go ahead and chime in with a, a little extra tidbit here. So I'm going to go ahead and let her have the, the line for a second. Let me just get off mute here for a second. Thanks, Becky. And I just wanted to thank you, Erin, for calling out Teespring because you know, for the folks uh, on the webinar, it is so simple to think of TechSoup just as the major market names that we all know, Microsoft, Cisco, Symantec, and to it, many others that you are, are, are household names. But you know, I, I would highly recommend if uh, you are either the person making IT selections for TechSoup choices for your BGCA site, or if uh, you are you know, sharing this information with people who will be making those decisions, you know, rec you know, let them know that there are lots of resources from HR help desk to uh, resources in terms of tech advisors, some consulting practices. Uh, you know, so I, you know, if you can take the time to just to go through at least the initial pages of each one of the donation offerings, I think you will be astounded at the breadth of what offers are there on TechSoup. Just don't respond to the, the latest marketing outreach because each one of these companies are here because they want to give back and support great nonprofit work. And so if you can recommend to your folks that they take a little time to become TechSoup experts, uh, that they're going to see a lot of benefits out of that, Becky. So thanks for letting me just pull that information up front. Happy to, Gail. Thank you for sharing that. So back to Aaron. Great. So yeah, that's, that's all I had to say about Teespring. Again, I think it's kind of a fun and creative way to uh, raise some money and awareness for your club. And if you have any questions, certainly email us at bgca at techsoup.org. Uh, my first step in terms of recommendation is going to our site, checking out the product page, seeing if it's a good fit for you, and uh, going from there. And one last uh, donor highlight is GrantStation um, as part of a fundraising tool. GrantStation is a web-based uh, subscription where you can find um, charities, and excuse me, grant makers and uh, tutorials on how to secure available funding. Um, I've listed a couple of the major capabilities that are also listed on the product page. Um, I'll just list a couple of things quickly from uh, some of these bullet points. You can get connected to top uh, national, regional, and local giving programs. Um, they offer detailed program information on extensive listing of federal grant opportunities. Um, let's see, they have uh, links to each grant making department in every state, so they make um, state funding research easier. Uh, they also provide step-by-step -step tutorials on how to build grant requests, right? letters. Uh, that's something that I think I've talked to a lot of clubs about, uh, sort of fleshing out that uh, professional side about seeking funds. Uh, and also they have a weekly bulletin of grant seeking opportunities. So this is pretty exciting. We have um, every year, uh, probably twice a year, a grant station promotion. Uh, I've listed the next one, which is next month on the 23rd and the 24th. I'm segueing to the next slide to show you what that means. The promotion is um, $99 as the admin fee. 
Uh, the fair market value for this is $699. And typically um, on non-promotion days, which is most of the uh, year, the administrative fee is $299. So the impactful cost savings on that uh, from promotion days is $600. Um, I've also listed some quotes from other clubs that I uh, sought out regarding their feedback about GrantStation here. And you'll see I think a lot of what they say resonates probably with a lot of you. Um, on this uh, webinar. Uh, for instance the, instance, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Alaska, they say there's no better value for GrantStation in terms of locating grant opportunities, uh, learning more about potential donors, communicating with them, and improving grant writing skills. Uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Dayton, uh, I, I recommend this especially for smaller organizations that do not have time to do a great deal of research that yet again is another thing that I think people would find GrantStation very useful for. Uh, we all uh, have little time and little money to do anything and make decisions with. So um, hopefully GrantStation is something that uh, fits your needs for your level and size of your club. Uh, from Silicon Valley, uh, they mentioned that um, it identified foundation funders that fund youth development programs in their geographic area. I think it's completely key. And I think again this is something that will resonate with a lot of you. And then lastly with Santa Cruz, um, they mentioned that um, uh, they use it for volunteer projects and seeking out um, um, volunteer um, a volunteer base that is willing to work with them. So um, I think those are a lot of themes that a lot of you probably hear and deal with. And I'm hoping that this is yet another uh, uh, product offering that uh, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of. Thanks for that, Erin. Um, one other thing with sharing um, – actually go ahead and – with sharing and, and applying for grants, Sorry about that. Um, one of the most important things to do is to have a great story for your organization that helps compel grant makers to want to give you donations. So I'm going to go ahead and just talk really briefly about Storymakers, which is a campaign that we run every year. In prior years it has been called the TechSoup Digital Storytelling Challenge and Events. And this is an opportunity for organizations worldwide, not just in the U.S., um, to, and it can be libraries, it can be nonprofits, to submit their digital stories. And they can be 6 second long Vine videos, or 15 second long Instagram videos, or 2 minute long YouTube clips, or 5 photos on Flickr that tell a story of your organization. And this year for the first time ever, we have $13,000 in cash prizes that we'll be awarding to the winners. And in particular, we're working uh, this year to help target organizations that work with young people. So that's why we wanted to highlight it on this Boys and Girls Clubs of America webinar, um, because we are working with organizations and there is one prize category uh, that's a $5,000 category that's directed at organizations that work on enhancing STEM skills in young people, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So if you have those kind of programs at your BGCA, in your after school programs or your recreational programming, those are the kinds of things that if you have little video clips, definitely pay attention to what's going on with our Storymakers campaign this year. And the submissions period opens up on August 26th and runs for a month. So you have a month and a half or so to get a digital story submitted for that to be able to win some cash and help amplify the story of your organization's impact in the community, which is the real point of this campaign every year. Uh, in addition to the, the actual challenge, we run a series of educational events, uh, webinars like this, but specifically around storytelling and helping you do it. We had one last week that was talking about how to create a breakout story. We have one next Thursday the 27th on using super short form digital stories like Vine and Instagram or Flickr or Flipagram or any of these little apps that you might have on your phone that can capture the impact that you're making in your community and really highlight and amplify the heroes in your community and the heroes that you serve um, day in and day out, and the heroes on your staff. So we want to help you do that, and we want to help you win some cash. So we have a variety of events coming up over the next month, and you can see them all by visiting TechSoup.org slash Storymakers. So I'm not going to go ahead and show the page. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about that because so much of 
of showing your value as an organization and getting more funds to support that value is in telling those compelling stories. So we want to make sure you know how to do it well. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Erin to talk to us a little bit more about technology planning and how our resources on site can help you do that and do it yourself uh, to improving your infrastructure. Thanks, Becky. Yeah, you know, um, one thing that uh, strikes me as integral to uh, getting these donation requests, and we sort of talked about it already, is um, sort of having your own do-it-yourself ability to make things work. As I mentioned, we don't, we're not able to offer tech support. We do have some supplemental um, resources that we talked about, and that's great. Uh, but I, I think I wanted to um, really, really talk about or let people see kind of where they may stand with this, <laughs> with this, um, this slide here. This shows a business technology maturity model at different levels from level 0 to level 4. And I have a feeling that you are all probably uh, varying degrees familiar with these levels. Uh, for instance, level 0 is defined as chaotic. Uh, there's no documentation. Uh, there's an unpredictability. Uh, you may have minimal IT operations. Um, level 1, reactive. And, you know, I think that actually is probably the biggest one for everybody. People react when something goes wrong. Um, and I, I think it's a matter of timing and resources. You know, we try to fill that gap with our donation requests and the resources we offer at our site. Uh, but oftentimes I, I wonder if people have the time to actually really sit down and kind of make a plan. And uh, level two is proactive. Um, you can predict so and solve some problems. Um, you can minimize downtime. But what you probably want to really get at is level four. Uh, the idea of seeing technology as a strategic asset. Um, I think oftentimes people don't really look at technology that way. I think they look at it as uh, a way to fill a quick need. Uh, but if you think of what the Boys and Girls Clubs do, um, if you look at your facilities, probably you take great care and time and energy into figuring out you know, where to uh, put all those basketballs, where to uh, feed the kids and how to feed the kids, um, you know, um, where you're going to have sort of a creative area for, for crafts. I'm sure there's a lot of other things pertaining to kids and the employees and their well-being and how they are able to uh, complete their, and do their jobs uh, day to day. Um, I'd like to think uh, that you can fit technology in there as the same or just as important um, a role in uh, what you do day to day. So with that in mind, I just have a couple of tips and ideas. Um, a couple of things that resonated me from, for me from that chart is to be proactive and not reactive, um, and also to seek to make technology a strategic asset. Um, and that's where we mentioned the resources. I just want to make sure that this is driven home. Uh, many of you place requests here and get, uh, get some donated products. And you know, a lot of you probably know how to use them uh, very effectively. Uh, but I highly recommend again you, um, you know, use our resources such as our forums, our webinars, and our tech blogs, and um, just to really get a well-rounded idea of what pr uh, the product uh, can do that you have. Um, another thing that I recommend is that if you see a product at our site, uh, I recommend going to the partner site and see if there are any demos. That gives you a, a real, real visceral view of uh, if that product is right for you or not. Um, I put a little asterisk there because um, you know, uh, the form in which uh, these products are offered through us may not always be exactly the same as what they are offered through the um, partner site. So take that little caveat with you when you look at these demos. But I go to a lot of sites uh, that have demos uh, for our partner products, and you, know, you really get an idea of what, what it can do for you. So uh, I recommend as well that you do that if you are seeking to get a product from us. First check it out and see if it's right for you, and uh, see if you can take a test drive. Um, I wrote Power in Numbers. Um, I believe YMCA's do this, and I'm wondering if uh, Boys and Girls Clubs do it as well. Um, I know that there are a lot of informal collaboratives with clubs in regions where they uh, work whether via emails, just having email threads with each other on what technology uh, products they use and uh, what works for them and what doesn't. But you know, maybe from the start of this webinar, um, something like that can happen for you. And maybe you can reach out to other clubs if you've got some technology need. 
Um, and maybe there's a club that's actually successfully uh, using a model that you'd like to copy. So I recommend making some sort of informal collaborative uh, and segueing to the next point which is product feedback from other clubs. I think this is really essential. Um, if you've seen a product on our site that you'd like to uh, request but you're not sure if it's right for you or not, uh, send us an email at btca at TechSoup and we'll see if another club has already used it. Uh, we'll get some feedback from them. Uh, we'll send it back to you after we you know, make sure with them that it's okay. And maybe that's the start of a collaborative. Um, and hopefully that's the start of uh, figuring out whether that's um, a good product for you or not. So anyways, just wanted to let you know about that in terms of do-it-yourselves. And I hope, I hope you could take away something from, useful from uh, some of these suggestions. All right. Okay. So the next couple of sites, uh, slides will showcase a couple of the um, supplemental um, do-it-yourself resources that we have. Um, this one is showcasing what you see from Microsoft emails when you get the fulfillment emails from them. Um, you'll get an email. Let's see here. When you place a donation request uh, for Microsoft, whether that's through Club Tech or individually, and of course I don't recommend you do that unless you have a quick need to get one license or two, uh, you'll receive a fulfillment email. Uh, first a confirmation email, then a fulfillment email which will provide you with um, download and installation instructions and license information as well. And then if you notice down here, um, a lot of other different uh, – you know what, I apologize. I'm looking at this. This is the online help section at our Microsoft site. Up here though is the email, a sample of the email that you'll receive. So I think we touched on a lot of this already when it comes to kind of the supplemental information at our site. So I'll segue to the next page. Ah, okay. So um, we don't have much time to talk about this, but uh, if anyone has any questions, we, you can certainly email us and we can give you more details about it. But when you, go, when you place a request um, at our site or through Club Tech and it's Microsoft products, um, you can log into our site and go to your account, and you'll see a history of your Microsoft requests um, including the fair market value uh, listed at the top right. So it's a, sort of a comprehensive, this is what you get aside from the product. These are all the, uh, the licenses you have, how many more you can get, and uh, what the impact is regarding uh, um, cost savings. Next slide. Okay, this slide just touches on a couple of key articles and blogs that we offer through our site. Um, these are just a couple of examples. Uh, we have some colleagues here who are every day working on um, writing relevant articles uh, for our site uh, that pertain to the products that we offer. Uh, for instance, the one I'm showcasing here, it says choose the right donor management software through TechSoup. And this has a list of all the offerings we have with a comparison. So this yet again is another way of figuring out whether a product is right for you and utilizing and maximizing our website uh, to the best that you can regarding the, regardless of just getting the product. Um, so we had a question asking that if you're the executive for three different chapters or three different clubs and you know, maybe you're listed as the person who typically would request donations and you would rather have somebody else do it, somebody who's maybe an IT pro or a consultant. Is there a way to have them listed so that they can request donations on your behalf? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if we get uh, – let's just say this is contracted IT um, work. Yeah, certainly if we get some proper documentation. Uh, we're certainly big on security. We want to make sure that the person that is on the account is legitimate. So that's uh, partly the uh, course security concern for your club. So yeah, we can certainly work something out. Uh, whether it's actually a fellow employee, that should be easier than, um, than actually IT. Uh, some contracted IT work. But that can also work out as long as we get some documentation or some proof in some, um, some valid way. So, but yeah, we can certainly talk about that, and I can provide you some uh, documentation on that. Great. So we had a couple of questions from people asking about other products that are currently not in our catalog. 
And you know, I mentioned in response to those individual questions that I know not everyone can see that um, you know, if there are products that you wish were in the catalog, we've pointed to the wish list. But if there are, catalog or if there are products that have been and you're wondering when they'll come back or if they'll be back or if they'll launch at some point, you know, the best way to find out is to subscribe to one of our regular newsletters. We have a couple of different ones. One uh, in addition to the BGCA specific newsletter that Aaron showed earlier, uh, we have the new product alert that comes out once a month. And that uh, highlights new products. So anything that's new in the catalog, that's where you'll see the big announcement if and when, uh, we hope it's a when, Adobe Creative Cloud launches. Uh, and, or if you're looking for what's going on with Cisco products or any other products. So we want to make sure that you know, you know that you can subscribe to any of the other newsletters available on our site um, and access those because that's where you'll find the most, uh, most up-to-date information. Another one we have is called By the Cup, and it's a weekly newsletter that comes out every Wednesday morning. And that one you can access um, you know, th those learning resources tend to be topic and theme based. So you can access those uh, you know, where maybe there's a section on social media fundraising one week, and the next week there might be something on digital storytelling or uh, crowdsourcing. And we also highlight product donations and forum threads in that as well. I want to go ahead and just show, uh, now that things seem to be working again, show the list of upcoming events and invite you to come join those. Uh, we have a variety coming up in the next few weeks. So please go ahead and register for any that are of interest to you. Our webinars are free and available to you uh, both live on the day of and on demand. So we hope you'll join us then. Thank you so much to Gail, Ashley, Aaron, and Alexandria on the back end for helping with today's webinar and to present. Um, I'd like to invite you all to take a moment to complete the post-event survey to help us continue to improve our webinar programming. And, please. and then lastly, I'd like to thank ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor for today that provided the use of their ReadyTalk 500 tool that's available in our catalog for donation. Uh, so that we could provide this webinar to you. So thank you so much everyone. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye.